In this video, we're going to tie Zimmerman's Clown Shoe Caddis. We're going to start off with a Tiemco 2488 or a 2487 hook. Uh, the difference is the 2488 has a straight eye, uh, the 2487 has a down eye. Either one works just fine. I think Jay actually uses a 24 set, 2487 in most of his. We're going to take our thread and we're going to start it at about the halfway point uh, of our hook here with some green or olive thread. And then we're going to take some small D-rib and we're going to tie that in. We're going to wrap it down the shank of the hook about halfway down the bend. Then I'm just going to take that thread and build a bit kind of a tapered underbody. Cover up all that D-rib so all I have is olive thread showing. That's going to color up the D-rib and shine through and give us the color that we want. You can tighten a lot of different colors. Olive seems to be the most popular in this fly. But a lot of other colors work. Browns, orange, black, you can really do whatever whatever you like the looks of. And then once we get our thread underbody kind of built, we can take that D-rib, we're going to wrap it so that the flat part wraps I'm having troubles getting the flat part to lay against the shank of the hook. You want the half round part to face up and the flat part to face down. There we go. We're just going to wrap forward evenly and smoothly until I get to that halfway point. Then I can just capture that D-rib and trim it out of there. Now the next thing we're going to do is tie in our wing. And for our wing we are going to use some elk hair. I like to use the natural color kind of has some done gray colors in there. We're going to put it in a stacker. Stack it up so that all the tips are nice and even. And you got to be careful not to overdo it with the hair. We want just kind of enough that fits underneath the bend of the hook. You don't want to do any more than that. Much more than that and this fly gets a little bit too bulky. Now the next thing we're going to do is just tie it in. We want it to be just a little bit longer than the back of the bend there. So I'm just going to take it, measure it out, pinch it into place, and tie it in. And we can trim out all the butt ends. And you can wrap through all those butt ends to make sure it's nice and secure. Now the next thing we're going to do is we're going to take our thread and we're actually going to go behind all that elk hair. Kind of like a parachute post. And all that's going to do is just stand it all up. I'm just going to go back there behind a couple times. And then I'm going to release some wraps right on top as well. That's just going to kind of help stand that wing up and keep it from laying down on the bottom body of the fly. We want that wing to stand kind of straight up. And if it's not cooperating with D, you can do it a couple more times. Just kind of draw that wing up and lay some wraps down there. And if you get a stray few fibers, you can 
cut or pluck them out. There we go. Now the next thing we're going to do is we're going to tie in our hackle. I'm just going to use some whiting high and dry rooster hackle and grizzly and I want those barbs to just kind of t lightly touch the, the tip of the hook there. That means they're about the right size. I'm going to tie that in right on top of the thorax here. Now I'm going to take my thread to about halfway in the middle of my thorax. I'm going to take a clump of the McFly foam here. It's nice and stretchy. I'm going to use some pink. I'm just going to wrap it around my thread just to get it started. I'm going to take it and place it right on top of my thorax there. And I'm going to wrap around it a few times with my thread. Kind of like a parachute post. Just draws it all together and keeps it all in place. And you want to use actually a fairly generous clump of that McFly foam. If you use too little, it won't really pop on top of the hook. So you have to actually use a little bit more than you think you would. If you draw it up, it's going to be about half the diameter of a pencil. But when it's all poofed out, it's actually a pretty generous clump. Now the next thing we're going to do is we're going to take some black super fine dubbing. We're going to dub the body of this fly. I should say dub the thorax of the fly. We're going to dub behind that McFly foam first. You kind of have to draw the McFly foam out of the way as you wrap that dubbing over the thorax. You want to work your way all around that thorax, kind of covering up all the thread, any little bits th showing through. You got to be real careful not to overdo it with the dubbing either. You need to just kind of use enough to coat your thread and you use consecutive wraps to kind of cover everything up. And there's our thorax. Now the next thing we're going to do is we're going to take that grizzly hackle and we're going to lay some turns right up against our wing then we're just going to space out wraps and kind of spiral them forward until we get up against our foam there and then we're going to lay a few right in front of our foam kind of fighting me here, so I'll try again. What I might need to do is just lay a, a little more dubbing. Sometimes when you get close to the head, I might have put that foam just a little too close to the head of the fly. And it didn't give the hackle enough kind of something to bite to. So I'm just going to lay down a little more dubbing up there and that'll give that hackle just a little more something to kind of grab a hold of. So we'll try that again here. There we go. in there and pluck out or trim out any of the extra fibers.
And the last thing to do is we're going to take that McFly foam. We're going to draw it up. And we're just going to kind of lightly stretch it. And we're going to trim just above our hackle feathers. If you trim right at the hackle feathers or too low, the McFly foam will suck back down into the fly. and It'll be too low of a post. So you just kind of stretch it up. And we're going to trim just above our hackle feathers. Just like so. You'll get that nice kind of half moon balloon shape on top of the fly and that's what you want. You can really see that fly from a long ways away with that big old McFly foam kind of post on it. You can trim out any extra fibers that got stuck or caught when you're tying the hackle in. There's always a few stragglers. Now what we're going to do is trim the bottom hackle on this fly. That way this fly will sit nice and flush to the water. All these, fly, all these barbs right now, if you leave them the way they are, will keep the fly from riding properly in the water. So we're just going to get in there and trim out some of that hackle. Careful not to overdo it. When in doubt, always chew, always trim fewer than than more. Got to be real careful that you don't over trim the hackle and cut it all out of there. So when in doubt, like I said, always trim a little less than you think you want. There we go. Just like that. Now that fly will ride nice and flush to the water. And that is the clown shoe caddis from Jay Zimmerman.